Thank you very much for inviting me, Genevieve. It's an absolute pleasure. It's an indication of uh, my interest and commitment to the Six Book Challenge that I'm standing here in London. It's a good deal of time since I've been here, and um, it's, it's not where I come very often. I'm on a missionary uh, project with a couple of colleagues from, uh, from the North East. It is an absolute pleasure to support the Six Book Challenge. It's, it's one of the fantastic initiatives that's happening in prisons throughout England and Wales. What I wanted to cover today is um, something about my, my interest in the project, something about uh, the challenge that faces us in, in prisons and, and how the, the Six Book Challenge helps us, something about my prison and my experience of, of how my colleagues organise the challenge there in the hope that that might be of interest and give some ideas to other people who are working in prisons. But, I'm also aware that later in the day we'll be able to steal lots of ideas from you, so I don't want people to think that I think we've, we've got all the answers. Um, and it occurred to me um, in preparing to speak uh, that there were so many astonishing eminent people who were astonishing uh, authors. And there's a PhD to be written there about what has been written in prison and, and what's been written by ex-prisoners. But one person that his autobiography affected me profoundly was, was an American called Malcolm X, who in his autobiography said the ability to read over, uh, over sorry, my, the ability to read awoken inside me a long dormant craving to be mentally alive. And I think that showed in his life after his uh, seven years <coughs> spent in prison, after getting a ten year sentence for burglary. I want to thank first of all the reading agency for existing because I think it's fantastic and it's such an obvious thing that it would be easy not to have a reading agency um, because I think it's something that lots of people who want to learn to read forget how difficult it was and how important it is. Um, I'm delighted to, to be asked to, to support the project and I'd like to thank all the people that support the people who are working in the literacy agency and, and the reading agency and to giving them their, their support. I'm also aware of the fact that Six Book Challenge is only one of the initiatives that, that the agency runs and it looks like a fantastic portfolio to me. My particular interest is because I think reading is great, but I found it incredibly difficult to learn to read. I was taught by my father's mother, who was a, a Gorgon, and she decided that I should learn to read The Pied Piper of Hamelin. <laughs> And I read it torturously the first two pages of the book every time she came to visit us. And I still don't know what happened to her. <laughs> but it was just brought me out in a cold sweat. I struggled to read and I struggled to write. And an indication of how long it took me to do both is in this book that I brought with me. It's, uh, it was a gift from my sister. And she inscribed it for me. It says, To Gadriel. I bet you you're glad you learned to read. Have a lovely birthday and I hope you will enjoy this book for many years to come, with love from Claire. Claire knew that I didn't know how to spell my name when she gave me that book, and I was a teenager then. And I've enjoyed that book very much indeed and would commend it to all of you who've all read it, I'm sure. So it's because of my experience that I'm very, very interested in, in supporting and opening this experience to prisoners. I've had a very rich reading life and I think it changes people. One of the things I wanted to say about the Six Book Challenge is its genius is in its simplicity. And, and for work, when you're working in a prison, particularly when you're running a prison, or when you're working in a library in a prison, life can be very complex and simple things can seem very difficult. Trying to get a biro when you go through our procurement can be very, very difficult. So a, a scheme which is easy to access and that delivers what it says it's going to deliver without you having to you know, prove yourself and jump through hoops is absolutely what we're all looking for. And the reading agency have nailed it. It's evident by the fact that you know 35,000 people have completed it in such a short time in the six years that Genevieve mentioned. It's a simple process for the people who are running it, and it's a simple process for the people who are participating in it. I remember having to do um, book reviews at school, and they expected loads and loads of words for you to write down. And the fact that the diaries are so small, and they demand so little, 
is, I think, absolutely key. That they don't look overwhelming and impossible or the sort of thing somebody else would be able to do. And the other the genius aspect for it, for, for me and my colleagues working with young defenders, is the fact that there's an air of competitiveness about it. If ever the interest of my prisoners is dwindling, all I have to tell them is that Pentonville have done more than us <laughs> for them to get the damage. <laughs> <laughs> Pentagon's bigger than us. Um, and so that really gets the dander up. So, well, what do we do? How many have they done exactly? Well, what does that mean? And so, and that is absolutely speaks to the competitive nature of 18 to 21 year old young men. It's interesting that 15 prisons have uh, got into the uh, medals list this time, and I'm really interested to hear that 100 prisons are participating. You're not far off your maximum, because sadly, there are, well, happily, there are not 150 prisons in England and Wales. Um, but, you know, it, it, it just is really accessible. You mentioned the difficulty of people, the, the people have in jail, and it, I was looking at uh, an article, a report published in 2010, which told us things which I'm not going to go into depth about, because I know librarians here know that. 52% of men and 72% of women in prison have no qualifications. The 48% of them have literacy levels below level one. And the 49% of them have been excluded <coughs> from school. This absolutely echoes with our experience of the individual young men that we have the pleasure of caring for at Deerbold. And our experience interestingly is that one of the things that motivates them to want to learn to read is social media and computing that is one of the things that makes people realize that there's a barrier there there's a motivation there and a reward for them to get over the barrier of reading and so we want to exploit that further in our experience in, in getting them motivated to engage I want to say something about how, how we do things at Deerwald. Um, and as I say, I don't want to imply that nobody else is doing these things too, but this is our experience. One of the key ways that we engage people in reading is using the Shannon Trust Toe by Toe project, which I'm sure most prisons use now. And it's a great way of both engaging prisoners who are learning to read, but also in incentivizing and motivating prisoners who are able to do the teaching. And it's hugely successful. One of the other things that we do is have volunteers that come into our one-to-one -one reading class where we've got the prisoners teaching, but we also have volunteers teaching and listening to reading. So we've got 15 volunteers, we've got one of whom comes in four days a week, every week, um, up from the town. We've got three that come over to Barnard Castle from Lancaster to do that work, which is probably at least a 100 mile round trip, I would think. Um, and they're remarkable people. And one of the critical things I would say about having volunteers that help prisoners learn to read is that it completely throws the dynamic of the relationship the prisoner has. Because they're to challenge then to the reality that this person's sitting next to them for free. <coughs> and why would somebody do that when they could be doing something else? And it allows the prisoners, or it makes the prisoners think about why, why is this person coming? Why does this person think it's important? Or more to the point, why do they think I'm important. That's a, where it starts for us, but concentrating on the six book challenge and how we manage it there. I, I hugely commend my librarians, uh, Christine Foster and, and Wesley Hooper who, are, Hopper, who are here today, who work for Durham County Council, who organise the diaries and publicity for the event, and they're hugely competitive. <laughs> they're, uh, you know, we were just talking earlier about how we can get going earlier in January this year. You know, to get to, you know, we decided to exploit the, the uh, lockdown of the holiday regime over Christmas and New Year. So how many books can you, you know, can you read six books over the holidays? And if you can't, can you start reading books over the holidays? So that's where we're going. That's why we're going to be getting gold next year. We look forward, <laughs> we look forward to coming down for that. One of the other fantastic things about the challenge is it celebrates success and that there's the certificates at the end of it. And I certainly, I've certainly been in our library where a young man's come up to me after we've given him the certificate. And he said, I'm just looking at the certificate. He said, it doesn't say anything about prison on it, does it? I said, no, it doesn't say anything about prison on it. He said, so does that mean I could put it in my portfolio of achievement? I said, I think that's exactly where I'd, I'd put it if I were you. And he said, well, that's fantastic. He said, I'm going, that's what I'm going to do. I said, well, that's just great. And then, of course, we had a conversation about what he was going to do next. 
um, as a consequence of that. But it's very difficult for people, and I'm guessing almost certain that everybody in this room, who've got a lot of certificates, who don't know where some of their certificates are, who don't have them framed and on the wall, and whose family and who they generally take them for granted, it's hard for us to imagine the significance of receiving a certificate from people who've never had one before and who've never actually been deemed by other people to have achieved anything. And it's very, very close to my heart to remember the importance of celebrating however modest or the significance of success that people have. We re recently went down and, and presented a certificate to a young man who just got two A stars in his mathematics A level. And that was great, but this is just as great. In some respects greater, because we know that the people that are learning to read or that are getting their reading back on track have started from all of this inclusion and failure and rejection in the past. So when my astonishingly wonderful librarians have um, wheedled their way into the hearts of the prisoners and persuaded them that they really want to not only read six books but write about six books, I have the easy task of going down to the library to, to be giving the certificates out and it's just fab. It's one of the best parts of the job of course. And it's what we try and do there is we always make sure that we invite to the library the group that are learning to read. So we want them to see what they can be doing next. Um, we invite the, the volunteers so it's an opportunity to thank them and motivate them and for them to feel recognised. Uh, I always try and do it if I'm in the establishment and sometimes we move it so that I will be there because I think it's very important for the senior manager in the prison to be there <coughs> and, and giving it the authority and, and the kudos that it, that it deserves. And the prisoners notice that and the staff notice that it's the number one governor that's doing that piece of work. So we have a ceremony. We, uh, there are Mars bars attached to the certificates. <laughs> there's tea and coffee and there's biscuits made by the kitchen. And all of those which might appear to be minor things actually uh, are not minor things to prisoners and they give it uh, a specialness which is absolutely appropriate. So we've got the learning to read prisoners, we've got the people that have got the six book challenge, we have the librarians and the volunteers and everybody gathers together. I say a few words about the importance of reading, you've heard some of them. And I take the opportunity to thank the volunteers. And I thank, take the opportunity to thank the Toe by Toe mentors. But I particularly commend the people who are learning to read for their courage. I always say that that classroom is full of the bravest people in the jail because they had to really be brave to get across the threshold and try again something which wasn't a resounding success the first time they tried it. And of course it gives me an opportunity to commend my colleague librarians and the other, the other staff who supported the prisoners. One of the things that we try and do is make sure that there's a member of staff who's also completed the challenge. Because and for me, that's about normalising it as, a piece, as something that you do. It's so often in prisoners, we expect prisoners to do things that we don't do. And to say, actually, and also this uniform member of staff's getting his certificate, allows the prisoners to say, oh, this is a normal thing, so everybody does this. It's not just for prisoners. And I think that's quite a powerful message for people to get. What I do, and uh, I was, well, the first time I did it, I've always done it, is say to the prisoners, when you come up, and I will take a photograph and I'll give you a certificate on your Mars bar, you will say something about your favourite book. And the first time I did that, and Christine was there when, when I did it, there was a look of utter horror and uh, astonishment, and they said, well, I wouldn't be here if I'd known that you were going to ask me to do that. <laughs> And I thought, well, there you go, you know. But I think if you do these things and just pretend it's normal, then people sort of think, oh, well, you know, she seems to think it's normal, and, you know, it's better to do it, you know. But one of the interesting things is nobody's ever stood up and not been able to talk about any of the books. So there's certainly people who are not pretending to fill the diaries in. They have actually read the books, which is one of the things I was testing. It's absolutely riveting. Because I look through the diaries before I give them out, so I know what they've read. And um, the couple of guys that have read Fifty Shades of Grey took kudos to them. <laughs> and neither of them admitted it. Neither of them chose it. Well, maybe it wasn't the favourite book, but neither of them said it was a favourite book. Christine said, did you want me to bring um, the diary? I think it was a lad called David. Yes. I can't remember his name. Did you want me to bring his diary so that you could tell people about his review of that book? I said, no, there's no need for you to um, bring his diary because I know what his review of that book said. 
What he wrote was, and I haven't read the book, but I've I noticed many millions of inches of, of newspaper uh, taken up in reviewing it. He could have saved an awful lot of trouble for everybody. He said, Christian is a control freak. Every guy would want Anna to be his chick. There is no story. It's all nonsense. <laughs> I commend my, my prisoner to you if anybody wants an abbreviated book review. So for those of you that have read it, you can decide whether or not he had it on the nail or not. I remember another young man, and they often stand up and they say, oh yes, I like this, it's about this who's a cage fighter or a boxer. And often they say, well, because he, he came from Leeds or he came from Bradford. Oh, you came from Bradford, oh, that's interesting. And I always engage them in a conversation about it to try and make it as accessible for the people that are watching to think, oh, well, that might be interesting. And one of the tricks to that, I, I always say to them, and so that's very interesting. So it's a book about somebody who's alive now. So he wrote that book himself. Yes, he did. So, so where would you find that book? And we always point to where it is in the library. And then you notice everybody else looks. And all the other prisoners go, oh, right, so that's, it's on the third shelf down and they're on the right hand side. And, and they do look and they think, oh, right, so I could find that book. And if it's there, we'll get to that, so that's what it looks like. And I think that's another way of just breaking down the barriers and the distance between you sitting there and the book that's on the shelf. And that works well. I remember the fellow whose name, I can't, I can't do the service of remembering his name, who, who said, oh, the, the, the two books at the end that I wrote about by John so and so. I said, oh, yes. And then they're, they're about, you know, dry stone walling. So I said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, yes. Uh, they're about dry stone walling. So I turned to Christine. I said, I didn't realise that we had a lot of books in the library about dry stone walling. And she said, No, no, we didn't. I got them especially because John wanted these books on, you know, dry stone walling. So I said, oh, So for why? And he said, Well, I am a dry stone waller, and I'm wasting my time in the prison if I don't find out more about the techniques that I'll be able to use when I go home, back to work. I thought, Well, that was absolutely fantastic. But then he gave me an opportunity to say to the other prisoners, of course, did you all realise that Christine can order books about anything you're interested in? You're not confined to the books that are here. And so for me, the, what I'm trying to get across, I guess, is that the opportunity to talk to people and to find out what people are interested in open lots of other opportunities for us to engage prisoners and to find different ways of breaking the barrier down, breaking the distance down, that journey between where you're sitting and where the book is. And the shorter that journey is, the easier it is for prisoners. It's fantastic for us to have an opportunity to, to achieve, to celebrate the success of the prisoners. And it's fantastic that the Six Book Challenge offers us the opportunity to welcome authors into the jail. And I know that we, Christy was saying, well, we're doing one reading book with an author who I, I can't remember. I said, well, did you arrange that through the reading agency? She said, no, no. She said, his, web, his email address was on the back of the book, so I just wrote to him and I invited him in. I said, well, so, you know, go straight, straight to the top. So that was great. But it's fantastic that the, regency, the reading agency arranged. And I know we had Anton Magnab in Deerbolt a couple of years ago. And it caused great consternation and interest around the establishment. Of course, the prisoners who just couldn't get there fast enough. They were actually fascinated to, to see this uh, eminent author and this man of their dreams, really. And so the comments were being made around the morning meeting in the prison. They all, you know, so when's he coming? And, and somebody said, well, you know, I think he was here a week ago, which none of us can find him. <laughs> and so I said, well, when he comes, how will we know who he is? And somebody said, well, he'll have a great big black reptile across his eyes. <laughs> so, you know, it, that, well, it is fantastic, it is absolutely fascinating for prisoners to meet authors. And of course, what they hear from the authors isn't how you write a book. What they hear from authors is how, how you could potentially live your life. And that's much more interesting and much more worthwhile. I was asked to consider, I mean, and I hope I've given you some ideas, but you know, what are the other ways we can encourage prisoners to write? And it did occur to me in the course of preparing today, for, for today, that maybe one of the themes or one of the um, hooks to tie this on is to do displays in libraries about prisoners who have written. You know, they are astonishing. Prisoners would be fascinated to find out Stephen Fry had been in prison. You know, and Oscar Wilde and Malcolm X and uh, Chris Hoon and whoever else you want to uh, mention. We could have a separate section for politicians. Um, <laughs> but, you know, these are all, 
you know, things that would make prisoners think, well, actually, you know, that it isn't that. You can be in prison and then you can have a life. You can have an eminent life and a life that can make a difference and to yourself, your family and to other people. <coughs> and looking at it from the point of view of a governor, why is a six book challenge important? It's important because it helps to engage prisoners who are um, potentially offside, potentially struggling to find something that they can achieve. Um, and it helps them to, if they're engaging with the library staff, the library staff can then encourage them to engage with other people. People that are being reawakened in their reading, they're reawakened in their curiosity and it also enables them to think about their future. We have targets in prisons to encourage people to pursue their education and training. We have targets for people to uh, pursue employment. We have targets to encourage people to be in settled accommodation. And if the six book challenge gives people confidence and a settled uh, period in the prison and allows them to engage in thinking about their future, then all of those targets are going to be supported by the, this beginning engagement. One of the, one of the ways that we got to our uh, momentous 118 um, completions this year from a, a prison with just 513 prisoners, in fact last summer we only had 380, we, had, we were going through a lean spell, it's, it, you know, so I think it's one in, one in three of our prisoners who completed the six book challenge last summer which is, I just think, fantastic. I'm prepared to tell you how we, we did it. There are lots of ways, but one of them was if you went to the segregation unit, you automatically were put on the six book challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's just a yeah, I'll just throw that one out there for free, but, you know, it's part of, you know, from a prison governor's point of view, I'm wanting people to be in the segregation unit for the minimum amount of time, and I want them to be as engaged as possible. I want them to have positive relationships with my officers who are working down there, and I want them to be thinking about how they can get back into the routine of the jail. And being engaged engaged in something like that, having conversations with the staff about choosing the books, about what they read. I always ask people what they're reading when I go and visit them. And it's all part of that, we're here now, where are we going to be later, you know, part of the journey. And so, you know, that's, that's a, a fantastic part of the regime, part of getting them into education, getting them out of the segregation unit. It's about, the six book challenge for me, it's about engagement, it's about achievement, and it's about accessing the future vocational courses, the, uh, the, all of the different things that are going on in the regime. I really need to commend the part of the Six Book Challenge, or the people that sat around when they were designing it, the committee, the person, the genius, who decided we wouldn't do pre-assessments and forms and post-assessments and evaluations and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different things you could do with a prisoner in between him actually doing what you had asked him to do, which was the thing he was interested in. So, you know, that is just so super helpful to us. We have a limited budget, and it is important to acknowledge the financial element of the Six Book Challenge, which is modest. It's particularly modest for me because it's paid for by Durham County Council, but um, it isn't an expensive thing to do, and it's very, very good value for money. And it is also something which you can engage across the entire prison. As I say, I've got uniform staff that have done the six book challenge, that have come to the certificate ceremonies, got teachers. Because I always say, well, where's the, you know, I said, where's the book? Well, one teacher said, oh, it's under my bed. I said, oh, okay, fair enough. You know, he didn't get it from our library. That's fine. But it's just really interesting for the prisoners to see everybody engaged across the jail. It's ready-made, it's simple, it's open to all, it's absolute genius, is in, in, it, in its simplicity. I told you that, um, that this is my favourite book. There's lots and lots of bits in that book that are really brilliant. But the best sentence in that book really is uh, applicable to the sixth book challenge, and it's at the end of chapter 27, when Scout says, Thus began our longest journey together. Thank you very much.